Tonight's storytelling is a tale from Finland called The Princess Mouse, a retelling by Aaron Shepard about a young man named Miko. According to his family tradition, in order to find a sweetheart, Miko must cut down a tree and follow to where it points. Miko's brother makes his tree fall how he wants, whereas Miko's tree seems to have a mind of its own. So what will Miko do when his tree points him into the forest, where all he finds there is a little mouse who gladly offers to be his sweetheart? Well, let's find out. And so, as always, my friend, settling comfortably under the covers, take a full, comfortable breath. And as you exhale, relax and let go. Allow any tension to just melt away. Letting your body sink deeper and deeper down into the softness of your bed. There is nothing else to do and nowhere else to be. So just lay back, relax, and enjoy the story. Once there was a farmer with two sons. One morning he said to them, Boys, you're old enough now to marry, but in our family we have our own way to choose a bride. The younger son listened respectfully, but the older one said, You've told us, father. We must each cut down a tree and see where it points. That's right, said the farmer. Then walk that way till you find a sweetheart. That's how we've done it, and that's how we always will. Now the older son already knew who he wanted to marry. He also knew how to cut a tree so it fell how he wanted. So his tree fell and pointed to the farm where his sweetheart lived. The younger son, whose name was Miko, didn't have a sweetheart but he thought he'd try his luck in the town. Well, maybe he cut the tree wrong, or maybe it had thoughts of its own, but it fell pointing to the forest. Good job, Miko, his brother mocked. What sweetheart will you find there, a wolf or a fox? Never mind, said Miko. I'll find who I find. The two young men went their ways. Miko walked through the forest for hours without seeing a soul, but at last he came to a cottage deep in the woods. I knew I'd find a sweetheart, said Miko, but when he went inside, he saw no one. All this way for nothing, he said sadly. Maybe not, came a tiny voice. Miko looked around but the only living thing in sight was a little mouse on a table. Standing on its hind legs, it gazed at him with large, bright eyes. Did you say something? he asked it. Of course I did. Now, why don't you tell me your name and what you came for? Miko had never talked with a mouse, but he felt it only polite to reply. My name is Miko and I've come looking for a sweetheart. The mouse squealed in delight. Why, Miko, I'll gladly be your sweetheart. But you're only a mouse, said Miko. That may be true, she said, but I can still love you faithfully. Besides, even a mouse can be special. Come feel my fur. With one finger, 
Miko stroked the mouse's back. Why? It feels like velvet. Just like the gown of a princess. That's right, Miko. And as he patted her, she sang to him prettily. Miko, sweetheart, will I be? What a fine young man is he. Gown of velvet I do wear, like a princess, fine and rare. Miko looked into those large, bright eyes and thought she really was quite nice for a mouse. And since he'd found no one else anyway, he said, All right, little mouse, you can be my sweetheart. Oh, Miko, she said happily, I promise you won't be sorry. Miko wasn't too sure, but he just stroked her fur and smiled. When Miko got home, his brother was already there boasting to their father. My sweetheart has rosy red cheeks and long golden hair. Sounds very nice, said the farmer. And what about yours, Miko? Yes, Miko, said his brother, laughing. Did you find a sweetheart with a nice fur coat? Now, Miko didn't want to admit his sweetheart was a mouse, so he said, Mine wears a velvet gown like a princess. His brother stopped laughing. Well, said the farmer, it sounds like Miko's tree pointed a good way too. But now I must test both your sweethearts. Tomorrow you'll ask them to weave you some cloth, then you'll bring it home to me. That's how we've done it, and that's how we always will. They started out early next morning. When Miko reached the cottage in the woods, there was the little mouse on the table. She jumped up and down and clapped her tiny paws. Oh, Miko, I'm so glad you're here. Is this the day of our wedding? Miko gently stroked her fur. Not yet, little mouse, he said glumly. Why, Miko, you look so sad. What's wrong? My father wants you to weave some cloth. But how can you do that? You're only a mouse. That may be true, she said. But I'm also your sweetheart. And surely Miko's sweetheart can weave. But you must be tired from your walk. Why don't you rest while I work? All right, said Miko, yawning. He lay down on a bed in the corner, and the little mouse sang him a pretty lullaby. Miko, sweetheart, will I be? What a fine young man is he. Cloth of linen I will weave. I'll be done when he must leave. When the little mouse was sure that Miko was asleep, she picked up a sleigh bell on a cord and rang it. Out of mouse holes all around the room poured hundreds of mice. They all stood before the table, gazing up at her. Hurry, she said. Each of you, fetch a strand of the finest flax. The mice rushed from the cottage. Then one two, three, and back they were, each with a strand of flax. First, they spun it into yarn on the spinning wheel. Whirr, whirr, whirr. Some worked the pedal, some fed the flax, some rode around with the wheel. Then they strung the yarn on the loom and wove it into cloth. Swish thunk, swish thunk, swish thunk. Some worked the pedals, some rocked the beater, some sailed the shuttle back and forth. At last, they cut the cloth from the loom and tucked it in a nutshell. Now, off with you, said the little mouse, and they all scampered back to their mouse holes. Then she called, Miko, wake up, it's time to go home, and here is something for your father. Miko sleepily took the nutshell. He didn't know why his father should want such a thing, but he said, Thank you, little mouse. When he got home, 
his brother was proudly presenting the cloth from his sweetheart. The father looked it over and said, Strong and fairly even, good enough for simple folks like us. And where is yours, Miko? Miko blushed and handed him the nutshell. Look at that, said his brother. Miko asked for cloth, and his sweetheart gave him a nut. But the farmer opened the nutshell and peered inside. Then he pinched at something and started to pull. Out came linen, fine beyond belief. It kept coming too, yard after yard after yard. Miko's brother gaped with open mouth, and Miko did too. There can be no better weaver than Miko's sweetheart, declared the farmer. But both your sweethearts will do just fine. Tomorrow, you'll bring them home for the wedding. That's how we've done it, and that's how we always will. When Miko arrived at the cottage next morning, the little mouse again jumped up and down. Oh, Miko, is this the day of our wedding? It is, little mouse, but he sounded more glum than ever. Why, Miko, what's wrong? How can I bring home a mouse to marry? My brother and father and all our friends and neighbors will laugh and think I'm a fool. They might think so indeed, she said softly. But, Miko, what do you think? Miko looked at the little mouse, gazing at him so seriously with her large, bright eyes. He thought about how she loved him and cared for him. I think you're sweet as any sweetheart could be, so let them laugh and think what they like. Today you'll be my bride. Oh, Miko, You've made me the happiest mouse in the world. She rang her sleigh bell, and to Miko's astonishment, a little carriage raced into the room. It was made from a nutshell and pulled by four black rats. A mouse coachman sat in front and a mouse footman behind. Miko, said the little mouse, aren't you going to help me down? Miko lifted her from the table and set her in the carriage. The rats took off and the carriage sped from the cottage so that Miko had to rush to catch up. While he hurried along behind her, the little mouse sang a pretty song. Miko, sweetheart, will I be? What a fine young man is he! In a carriage I will ride when I go to be his bride. At last, they reached the farm, and then the spot for the wedding, on the bank of a lovely, swift-flowing stream. The guests were already there enjoying themselves, but as Miko came up, they all grew silent and stared at the little carriage. Miko's brother stood with his bride, gaping in disbelief. Miko and the little mouse went up to him. That's the stupidest thing I ever saw, said his brother, and with one kick sent the carriage, the rats, and the mice all into the stream. Before Miko could do a thing, the current bore them away. What have you done? cried Miko. You've killed my sweetheart. Are you crazy? said his brother. That was only a mouse. She may have been a mouse, said Miko tearfully, but she was also my sweetheart, and I really did love her. He was about to swing at his brother when his father called. Miko, look! All the guests were staring downstream and pointing and crying out in wonder. Miko turned and to his amazement saw four black horses pulling a carriage out of the stream. A coachman sat in front, and a footman behind, and inside was a soaked but lovely princess in a gown of pearly velvet. The carriage rode up along the bank and stopped right before him. 
Miko, said the princess, aren't you going to help me down? Miko stared blankly a moment, and then his eyes flew wide. Are you the little mouse? I surely was, said the princess, laughing, but no longer. A witch enchanted me, and the spell could be broken only by one brother who wanted to marry me and another who wanted to kill me. But sweetheart, I need a change of clothes. I can't be wet at our wedding. And a grand wedding it was, with Miko's bride the wonder of all. The farmer could hardly stop looking at her. Of course, Miko's brother was a bit jealous, but his own bride was really quite nice, so he couldn't feel too bad. The next day, the princess brought Miko back to her cottage, but it was a cottage no longer. It was a castle with hundreds of servants, and there they made their home where they lived happily ever after. And if Miko and Princess had any sons, you know just how they chose their brides. And as this sweet little tale now comes to an end, embrace this wonderful feeling of comfort and warmth. Let it wash over you. Welcome this feeling. Let it flow through your whole body. Flowing through your toes, your feet, your legs, softening, melting, and relaxing. Flowing through your fingers, your hands your arms, peaceful, calm and relaxed, flowing through your back, loosening and releasing, your shoulders soften and ease back, soothed by this wave of relaxation that is now spreading through your neck, your face, and your scalp. You feel calm. You feel relaxed. You feel completely at ease. And in this pleasant feeling of comfort and relaxation, it's so easy now to just let go and drift and float into that peaceful, blissful state. Drifting and floating, floating and drifting. Going deeper and deeper down, all the way down into a sound and restful sleep. My friend, may your slumber be peaceful, may your dreams be sweet.